What's up guys, it's Jim with Awaken TCG, bringing you guys another weekly locals video. This week we have the GOAT himself, Goatee Jones, won the poll by landslide because of course he did. Um, this week is going to be a little special because neither myself nor Wraith ended up piloting the deck. We have a local player who plays a ton of Hody Jones. So he actually ended up playing games for us and we just kind of recorded his games. And we also have him here today to explain the deck list. So Colin, would you like to show us what you run in this best deck and format? First of all, why did you say ton, tons of Hody games? I don't play tons of Hody games. Yeah, you do. Ah, you're trolling me. Uh, well, obviously, first starting off is 4K Me Searcher. You have to play 4K Me Searcher. I mean, your whole deck is Merfolk and Fishman. I mean, like, why not, right? Every, almost everything in the deck is searchable. Minus a few tech cards here and there that personally I just like because they feel pretty good. Like, for example, searchable 2K Zeo. Zeo. He's, I mean, you're never playing this this dude at you all. You haven't played him once? No, you yeah. never play him. His ability is not worth it, but he is a searchable 2K, which is not bad. And then another searchable 2K, uh, East Blue Hachon. The thing is, is his trigger doesn't work because your leader is an East Blue, so you can't play him out of life, but he is a Fishman, so you technically he is searchable off Kami as well. And then to round out my list because I run 10 2Ks, it's four Mihawks. And the reason I run four Mihawks is because there's actually a decent amount of four, six slash characters that I run. So if you do get a Mihawk on turn three or turn two on your three dawn turn, um, you can basically just play Mihawk straight into the slash, one of the slash characters, developing a pretty nice board. Right, um, similar to Yamato. Yeah, similar, yeah, similar to Yamato. It's, it runs the same thing, except they play out, what, what's it, Okiku or? Uh, Ohm and other stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, it works out. Um, another thing is Vander De Deccan. Um, I like this card, but I might mess with the ratios a little bit more. Um, it's just a, for two Dawn, you pitch a card, a Fishman card, or an Oa's Ark from hand, and then you can blow up any rested character. Like, it doesn't matter the cost. Whatever, it just destroys a drop kid because they'll rest it if they don't have a Rosinante blocker. They spent nine Dawn to set up their kid and then you just spent two Dawn to remove it and now you're just swinging massively at them. So it's a nice card here and there. I don't mind it. Might drop it to three, might drop it to two. We will see. And then three of Dosen. I like Dosen, except the one problem is his effect's really nice. It's just not good into black. Like... Sakazuki and Moria completely remove it. Um, it's three cost. I mean, it's hella easy to remove. They run Luchis. You can Houndblaze it off just leader effect. It doesn't stick on board. But against leaders like Yamato or even Reiju. Uh, like, Reiju can only remove it with I Ichiji? Uh, Niji. Niji. Can only remove <clears throat> it with Niji. But, like, even then, I mean, they have nothing else to remove it. They can't... Ichiji into it, they can't swing into it. I mean, it's free, it sticks on board most of the times. Um, and then four of, Lovely Daruma. Now, this card is fantastic, except it is Dawn times one to activate his effect, whereas most of the other Fishman cards are just, it's absolutely free. Um, but he is a double attacker. He is Dawn times one double attack. Um, or not double attack, re-stand, re-swing. Um, it can, kind of sneak some wins off some people because they don't expect it or they can't remove it and then you just swing big two turns in a row. It's honestly kind of gross. Um, one of the good Fishman cards. Another lovely Fishman card that was out of the set is Arlong. This card is insane against any deck that wants to swing. Moria, Queen, it completely shuts down Queen. It shuts down Sakazuki effect if you stun their leader. It shuts down... Yamato. Yamato, yeah, they could big swing on three dawn and just their swing eight and you can 2k, 2k or just like take it and then next turn just drop an Arlong. And now they didn't develop a board and they can't swing again next turn. And it's like, okay, completely free. Like the, the match is almost won right after that because you just drop blockers right afterwards. And then another 4-6 slash is Hodian Yozo, the promo. This card is just the replacement card for the Hyozo... 06 Hyozo card. The reason we're running the promo card is because you can't play that promo card or that you can't play the Hyozo card 
off Icaros. Where would you like me to put it, Jim, right here? Yep. You can't play promo card off Icaros, or uh, not promo card, Hyozo off Icaros. The reason you can't do that is because Hyozo is technically a merfolk. I don't know why in our region it says Fishman on the card. It wasn't eroded. You're not allowed to play it. It's illegal. If somebody does it against you, you get in trouble. But you can play Hodi and Hyozo because it's technically merfolk and Fishman. So this, it's literally the same card. It's just... Um, all it is is it just has two types, so now you can play it off Icaros. Um, and wonderfully, Icaros is a 5-6, which, by the way, plays a 4-cost or lower Fishman. So you can play Hody, you can play Arlong. If you don't have any other targets, you can just play Daruma or Dosin, which is fine. I mean, it's not the greatest, but these are your two best targets for this card. Because on your 5 Dawn turn, you just develop a 5-6 and a 4-6. Most... Most leaders can't deal with it. I mean, it's honestly really strong, really aggressive. And then the goat himself is the next card. Hody Jones. Four of Hody Jones. I don't. I don't think I need to explain this card. It is honestly just seven Dawn Rusher. Rest two things. Rest two characters. Rest two Dawn cards. Rest a Dawn card and a character. Like it messes up your opponent's turn. There is almost nothing they can do most of the time. Um, with this leader specifically, because you don't have to take life, if you see like three, three of these in a row, most games are just one on the spot. They're like, I have not seen most leaders who can deal with a rest leader, Hody, swing nine. The next turn, rest leader, um, Hody again, swing nine, swing nine, because you're attaching Don, and you just keep doing it, and they just can't handle it. It's honestly really strong, um, but. Again, it's not the best in the meta. Then I have my tech cards. We have three of laws. Um, the five, six blocker law is really good. For example, if you want to bounce back your Mihawk when you play your Mihawk turn or your Kami, and then you can play out one of your buddies, your Dosins or your Darumas for free. Um, just a really strong card with recursion and hand size. This deck runs really low on hand size. It's got absolutely no draw because for some reason they hate green decks and they don't want to give them draw. Um, but you can also, off law, play this other tech card, three of Rosinante blocker. And the reason I run three of them is because you honestly want more blockers, um, and these are the best two drop blockers. They save you from Lucci blowing up stuff. Uh, they save you from, what else, Jimmy? There's a bunch of... Uh, I mean, you know, if you're going against an opposing Hody Jones, they save you from Vander Decken. <laughs> that is true. Yeah, yeah. These roll I mean, Vander like it's I mean, actually any, any black KO they're gonna save you from mm -hmm. anything that's not a bottom deck. Mm -hmm. And it works really well, and it's just a strong card. I mean, I wanted to add them to the deck just because I felt like uh, you develop a lot, and then your hand size goes down to like three, and then you don't have a blocker. Maybe you have one blocker, and then they're just swinging at your stuff, and you have to pitch stuff, or maybe they blow up two of your things with Lucci, and you're just struggling most of the game. Um, and then two Do Flamingo, 10 drop Do Fl Don Quixote Do Flamingos. Just the boss monster card. I This this deck's boss monster is technically Hody, and I was messing around with uh, Secret Rare Zoro and Do Flamingo to see which one I liked more. I'm on and off about them. Um, Zoro's a lot better in the, most of the other decks, whereas Do Flamingo can help you. Uh, set up turns and survive an extra turn, and it's a 10-10, you're freezing three things, you're freezing leader, it can help you win games when normally you shouldn't have won the game. Um, it's just, I mean, it's the premium green boss monster, like what else are you going to say? And then finally, the best card in the deck, <laughs> which apparently I'm seeing more often than not, is my one of, there you go. There's my there's one there. of Ark Noah, the Ark Noah. I was running four of these for a while, just because, I mean, you see them in life, they are annoying for the opponent. Like, if they have multiple swings, it's rest all the characters on your opponent's board and screws up their turn. Like, what, what are you supposed to do? Problem is, when I had more than two in the deck, I drew them every time. Like, I drew three in a row, or I draw two in a row, and then I would Kami search, and I wouldn't see anything. Like, I'd see... Two Mihawks, the Doflamingo, a Law, and then I'd see the Ark, and it's like, okay, well, what am I supposed to do? Like, I'm screwing myself. 
Um, but one of is just the funny little haha -ha card. Like if I see it in life, it's awesome. If I don't see it in life, whatever. I can just pitch it off Vander. It's not terrible regardless, but this deck does run a lot of bricks. So, you know, you can get kind of hand clogged sometimes and it can feel bad. I mean, at the end of the day, best leader in the game is gonna be rough to beat, so. <laughs> so let's get right into the game. And getting into game one here, looks like we're gonna be going against black and green Perona. Gonna show the starting hand. Looks like we have a baby five searcher to start with already a Morian hand. So that is probably your ideal starting hand if I had to guess. Um, how is this matchup as a Hody player? Um, it's honestly fine. You just don't wanna play any of your three fours early if you can avoid it. Because he's just going to use leader effect to rest and swing into it. Mostly. Gotcha. Looks like Prona is going second as well, which is definitely the curve that he wanted. Going to play the baby five off rip and grab a 2k, which will be very useful against a deck that goes very aggressive like Cody Jones. Now on three dawn, our best play here is I'm assuming a Dosun or um, the other one. Don't know the other name, but looks like, oh no, actually Mihawk and Arlong, which is not bad. And... Uh, Perona, if they do have uh, the Ryuma here, this is going to be a perfect curve pop onto that Arlong, but looks like they do not have it and going to attach three and swing eight. Now with five cards in hand, we're actually going to counter out with the two and a one, and he will just use that one remaining Dawn to search with baby five once again. Looks like grabbing another 2k and bottom decking a Ryuma, so less likely chance that he sees it in the future. Now with five Dawn, looks like we're just going to go four at the... Um, baby five here and then we'll go five with leader that's just going to be an easy 1k with the 150 dollar sabo and then we're going to swing with the arlong and going to give that 2k that he searched out earlier and then we'll play law and bounce mihawk to hand with no uh card to play out afterwards you just did not have a target i'm assuming there yeah i didn't want to drop uh Mihawk again. I just I didn't have anything but big bodies. Gotcha. Okay. And then Prona going to swing at six at lead. No block here. We'll just take because we are low in uh, cards in hand. And then he'll play the extra to pop the Arlong. Pretty simple turn from Perona here. Now on seven Dawn. Who else on seven Dawn other than Goaty Jones himself? Choosing to not activate leader effect here. And uh, just probably wanting that extra swing, I'm assuming. Mm hmm. And we're going to go 6 into 6, we'll go 8 into 6, he will take that, and then we'll go 5 into lead, and he will take going down to 2. Now at this point, Perona's actually not very good at getting rid of like any card that's above 5 cost. With 5 cost like Law, she can do that and just minus them and pop. But with 7 cost, they don't really run Great Eruption or anything like that, so unless you have a Kuzan on board, it's pretty hard to get rid of, but... Going to drop that Ryuma and Kuzan, KOing the Law and drawing a card. So actually really good turn for Prona on 8 Dawn here. Um, don't think uh, he had any good targets for Moria, so there's really no reason to play it out at that point in time. But now on 9 Dawn, we've got Goaty Jones on board again. So if we have another one, I assume we're going to play it here, but it doesn't look like we do. Going to go, what is that, 5, 6 on lead? Going to go 11 lead, followed by 2 11k, 2 leaders. So... Putting an opponent on, you better have a blocker next turn or you're going to lose. Um, just probably didn't have a lot of great cards to play out of hand, I'm assuming. <laughs> I had nothing but 2Ks in okay. hand. I couldn't do anything. A handful of 2Ks, so that is probably what I would have done as well. So yeah, getting the Kuzan on board here, so going to allow him to finally uh, get rid of the 7 cost. Going to go 5 to lead, followed by a 6 to lead. We will take the 6. He'll go 5. We'll give him a 1. Oh, and it looks like we're going to drop a 10 cost Doflamingo, so... That card really rough right now because we cannot attack into leader, but we will just return fire with the 10 cost of Flamingo of our own, locking Kuzan, leader, and also Ryuma. So that was a huge Doflamingo, and if he does not have a blocker right now, this game is over with zero life. So now Prona on 10 Dawn uh, does have the Moria, but I don't think the trash is really optimal to play it. So he's going to go ahead and play the brand new. And it looks like going to grab a 2k there. Now 8 Dawn remaining. Probably still thinking about playing the Moria, but truly it's probably just not worth it. Probably trying to build the trash with the brand new there. But at this point in time, we definitely just want to play a blocker if possible. So he'll go 2 on Doflamingo and then swing 12 at Hody. So 
Going to actually counter out with double 2k and a 1k here because we know he has no other swings into it. So at this point in time, we're just probably going to go crazy at the next turn. And going to drop two, no, four Don. No, two Don for the Rosinante and then a four Don for it looks like a Borsellino. So double blockering up here. So going to be a little rough, but we do have leader effect, which is going to allow us to rest that Rosinante for free. So going to play Kami on the board right now. Probably searching for another Hody, I'm guessing. Looking for a Hody. Yeah, yeah so no, no Hody found. So we go with plan B which is most likely rest leader and then just swing big. So yeah, we're gonna do rest leader, rest the Rosinante. He's gonna read leader as if uh, he doesn't know what it does, but everybody knows what Hody does. He is the best leader in the game. So that was just a little joke on his part. I'm gonna put one, two, three, four, five on lead, swinging 13. And with four remaining, let's say we've got a 13, 14 swing. So if he cannot counter out of the 13 right now, that is going to be the game as you see there. So GG's, that was a good display of Hody against a pretty good deck nonetheless, because I don't know if that is the best matchup ever, to be honest. Um, but anyways, without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the next match. And getting into game two here, going to be going against a Raju, our buddy bully piloting Raju here. He actually has an alt art leader, but he accidentally left it at home, so... No drip on the right side, unfortunately. Looks like we're going to choose to mulligan this hand. How do you mulligan with this deck? Because I'm not too familiar. Is it just you don't see Kami, you mulligan, or you just don't see uh, early game? Uh, Kami, if you find Kami's, I keep. If I find seven drop Hodes, normally I'll keep. Or if I find a combo. So, like, if I find the five drop um, into, like, an a Arlong drop, yeah. or a four six, then I'll keep as well. Or There's like, a bunch. Or, like, a Mihawk and do a... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll only drops. mulligan if I see, like, two Ks and, like, a ten drop. It's like, okay, well, I gotcha. can't do anything. Okay. And it looks like we are going to be going first once again on Hody Jones here. Um, did you end up choosing first this game, or was this a lost dice roll? Uh, lost dice roll, Bully gave me first. Okay. Would you have chosen first if you won dice roll? Um... I, I always choose first against Raju, but I feel like second's better for me. Okay. Because if you get that uh, double attacker or the restand swinger, it's you can attach a Dawn and play on curve still. Valid. Okay, and looks like Raju's going to actually start with a Kaya, which is the worst start for Raju, so always love to see that into a one-cost event that he's going to leave on board for a little bit too long. <laughs> And then looks like we're just going to swing five and then drop Dosun on three. So great card to drop on curve. And looks like he drew into stage here. So going to immediately activate, grabbing the four cost Raju now. Now going to attach one to lead and swing six. We will take that. And then he'll do the two Dawn to put the Raju in the trash and bring out the four cost Raju drawing three. So fantastic start here for Raju. And looks like he already has a five cost and a seven cost in trash, so trash is already built with stage on board. So, pretty scary spot here. But going to end up swinging with Dosun instantly, bring himself to a six k, and we activate the leader. So we actually do not need to take a life, and then we will drop the five cost here, getting the six k and six k Hody and Hyozo on board. So, really great turn there for us, and not having to take life for either of those effects is really good as well. So it looks like Raju now going to use the Germa 6-6 event, grabbing the Vinsmoke Ichiji, which you always want to see. Going to activate Stage and grabbing another one. So if he didn't find it in the first search, he was definitely going to find it in the second. But looks like that's with four Dawn remaining. Yeah, he'll just spend all of it. Going to bring out the seven cost and drawing a card. Oh, did he forget to draw a card there? I think he might have forgotten to draw a card there, but that is fine. Going to minus two to the Dosun, and I think he actually swung into it when you actually cannot KO it. So, little known fact there that actually ends up working out in our favor. So, now on seven Dawn here, we can either just go face or we can try to swing into board, but looks like we're going to activate leader effect, resting Kaya, and using Dosun effect, swinging 6k, most likely into the Raju, he'll end up taking that. Probably not too mad about that as he gets to build his trash. We'll activate Hody and Hozo effect, bringing it to a 7 and swinging at the Chiji, I think. And we'll swing a 6k at lead, trying to ask for a 2k. Looks like he's just going to take. Don't think he had one in hand. We'll go another uh, 8k at lead and he'll give us a double 2k there, which is very interesting. So 
Now with not a whole lot of cards in hand, he really does need a Raju here, which he actually has in hand, so he's not in such a bad spot. He'll go ahead and grab a 2k Sora, which is definitely very much needed here. But with this board, especially one you can't get rid of, it's going to be really hard to not take a ton of life next turn. So going to use that Raju right off the bat like I figured he would, and then going to figure out how he wants to swing with this Ichiji right now. Um, just asking about the Dosun, and yeah, you cannot attack into that. The only way Reiju can get rid of that right now is if we had a Niji. So, pretty vital card in this matchup for that reason, and pretty annoying card, I would say, as well. So, wait, he's try trying to swing with the Reiju we just played. We'll go ahead <laughs> and, uh, let him take that back, and then probably going 7k into one of our 6ks, we'll just give him a 2k, and then 5k lead, we'll give him a 1k. And then, yeah, going to use that Niji that we were talking about earlier, bouncing back the Dosun to hand. Now, Reiju at three life cards and five cards in hand with a pretty sizable board. Going to be a pretty scary spot for him, especially now that we're on Nine Dawn. So, going to use Leader Effect, which is showing that we're going to start using our Fish Man effects. And you start swinging into board here, I'm assuming, in or instead of Leader? Yeah, you just try to clear their board. It's yeah. your best option. So going to go 7 at the Reiju will instantly decide to take that one. Now going to put 2 on the Hyodi and Hozo. Going to go at the Ichiji. Going to go 9 to 7. So going to require a 2k and a 1k, which he will instantly give us. Even going to miss the 4 cost Ichiji, which I don't really agree with, especially knowing that we have another swing incoming. And then going to take that Hodi swing and just go ahead and play another 5-6 and another 4-6 Arlong. Did you? I think you activated our long effect on leader, so Reju actually cannot swing. Yeah, I locked his leader for the turn. Really, really good combo there, because now we basically gave him one attacker. Sure, he could attack with Kaya, but he actually got rid of his four cost Ichiji here, so he really can only swing with Niji right now. And this board cannot be dealt with, so with two cards in hand, if he wants to get rid of our biggest attacker, he'd have to go like 10k at Hody. Even then, we might have the counter right now, so it looks like he's actually going to end up picking up that 4-cost Ichiji here. If I, I think I saw that right, but I'm going to go 6k. At one of our 6ks, we'll give him a 1k. And going to decide to play Reiju, drawing 2. And going to decide to spend 1 on the Jerma event here. And grabbing another 2k, so just replenishing hand, trying to find any way possible to survive this next turn. And with one down remaining, we'll just pass as there is not much to do with that. Probably could have used that a bit more efficiently to swing at board, but it probably wouldn't have made too much of a difference. Now with this insane board, we're actually going to choose not to activate leader effect because we just want to get the max amount of swings possible. And we really aren't in a position where we're going to die next turn, especially if we're swinging at board. So he'll actually counter out of the 5k to 5k. We'll go 6k to 5k. We'll go another 6k to 5k. And then he will actually take that one. I'm going to go 7k to lead. He'll give us another 2 and a 1. We'll go 8k to lead. He'll take that. And then the kicker with Tendon, we will lock Reiju, Niji, and the Reiju leader. So if this game wasn't already over, that is basically going to seal Reiju's fate right now. There is no combination of cards that will save you. A judge here could be really solid, but even then you're probably still dead next turn. Even if you're running a uh, Yonji blocker, I really don't see a situation where you're getting out of this. So with one card in hand, just going to swing 7k to assuming he minus that to 4. But at this point in time, one card in hand, um, there's just no scenario where you're surviving this board with one life. So we'll just make it quick, go 7. Uh, 8 with Hody, and yeah, two cards in hand, he will not have enough. So, beating one of the best decks in the meta with Hody once again, guys. This deck is no joke. And getting into our final match here. Unfortunately, going to be going against another Reiju, so we don't get a ton of variety in this video. But still getting a good game in here. So, final game here, going against our buddy Chad. This is the first locals he's been at in a little while, but he's definitely a pretty decent Reiju player, so going to be a good match here. Going first, once again, going to rip the Kameon 1 into Hody Jones, which, it, which is definitely our best find, depending on the hand. Um, going to, on 2 Dawn, play the Germa 6-6 six, six stage, searching top 5. 
Um, best one you can find here if you do not have stage is probably going to be a Reiju, but he's going to grab the Ichiji. And if he has stage right now, he's in a really good spot. And he actually does. So going to start it off, do stage, probably trash in the Ichiji, which he will do. Searching top three. And going to grab the four cost Ichiji. So an absolute perfect start for Reiji right now. Um, definitely going to be a rough game. So swinging 5k lead, he will go ahead and counter out of that with a Niji, building the trash even more. And then we'll just drop a Daruma on three. So perfect curves for both of us at the moment. But unfortunately, I think Reiju is going to start putting on the pressure. So yeah, going to go five lead. Followed by the instant 7 lead with the uh, Ichiji from Trash, drawing 1 as well. And 7k lead, we will honestly we will actually be forced to take as well. So we're going to activate stage, putting Reiju in the Trash and looking at top 3. Going to grab a Sora 2 hand and pass back to us on 5 Dawn. So if we have, um, what's the 5 drops name? Uh, Ikaros. Yeah, if we have Ikaros right now, it's probably going to be our best play, so... Gonna go 5k lead, and if I had to, or is that um, is that activate leader effect, or is that 5k lead? I I'm like saying it out loud, but yeah, okay, yeah, okay. activate leader effect, yeah. Activate leader effect, so we don't have to take life with the Karos here, and then we'll actually go a uh, into a Arlong and lock leader down, so we cannot get too many swings in in this next turn. So we're gonna just put it backwards, so to remind him. But now on 5 Dawn, going to drop the German 6 6 event once again. If we didn't already have a perfect hand at this moment in time, I'm going to grab the 2 cost Reiju, which is probably our best find here. Um, with 4 Dawn remaining, if I'd assume our best play right now is probably just drop a Reiju and then swing 9. Um, don't think there's a lot of stuff to do yet, which is exactly what he will do. Going to go 9. And then drop the Reiju, bring it to Trash, and playing the four cost out. And drawing three cards. So, very good card there, and probably the main reason why Reiju is so strong. Did he just activate stage two times in one turn, or am I tripping? You might, I think you might be tripping. I might be tripping, but he just activates stage, and going to grab the four cost Ichiji here. And now on 7 Dawn, um, if we do have Hody Jones, probably would play it, but we're going to choose not to, swinging 7 at lead. Probably better than swinging at a GG and just asking for a 1k. Swinging at leader at least is going to ask for 3k worth of counter right now. So going to make him think about it here, he'll give us a 2k and a 1k. We'll just go 5k, oh no, we'll activate leader effect, so we don't have to take life when we use this Daruma effect. We'll put 3 on. Go 8k Lee, or no, 8k to Ichiji. I think he just gave us a 2k there, and we'll go 8k once again. So if you do not have a 2k, which he does not, oh, we'll go at lead this time. And he actually counters out of that 8k with two ones and a two. So with our two remaining Dawn going to drop a Rosinante. So if he swings a little bit too big in one of our characters, we can choose to block instead of counter out of hand. But Reiju with a decent board is going to allow him to actually swing pretty heavily into board. Yeah, especially if we have the Ichiji here, because it is going to make this board a lot easier to swing into. Um, that Daruma does not keep the 1k for the opponent's turn, correct? Yeah, no, I didn't remove the dice. Okay, no gotcha. Idea. All good. Yeah, he'll, he'll bring that one down to 3, I think, and then swing with lead, and we'll choose to take that. Go to grab a Reiju off of the stage effect right now. So if we were running out of cards in hand, we definitely aren't now. So going to use the Germa 66 event, searching top five once again. Going to grab the Niji three cost right now. Don't think he has enough Dawn to play it, but it will probably be a good card to play next turn. Going to go seven at six. We'll give him a 2K. Another seven at six. We'll follow up with another 2K. And a six at six, we will give him a 1K. Now with, I think that is going to be three or four cards in hand, we are running out of resources just a little bit. And our board has kind of whittled down. If we get a Hody Jones right now, we're probably in a pretty decent spot. So we're gonna go seven, I'm assuming at leader, no, at Ichiji. With three cards in hand, probably not wanting to counter out. Gonna go seven at the other Ichiji, who'll give us a 1K, and then we'll activate leader effect playing Hody Jones. And going 8k into the Ichiji now. With two cards in hand, if those are not uh, 2k's, yeah, you're definitely going to want to take. So clearing that board completely 
and getting Hody Jones on the board with a blocker still present. We're in a pretty decent spot here, especially when opponent is at only three cards in hand. But if he does have the two cost Raju to search, it's going to be a little rough. I'm going to do the Niji effect, bringing out a five cost from trash, bouncing, uh, Oh, just KOing the Rosinante, mm -hmm. which is a, a decent play. I, I probably would have bounced the Arlong if I were him, but that's that's not a bad play either. I'm going to go 5k to lead. Uh, I will counter out one. Another 5k, going to counter out another one. And then he'll actually use the Black Bug to bottom deck our 5 cost. Pretty, pretty solid play there as we are getting rid of board while developing our own. And then activating stage to grab a Sora. So... Now on Tendon, if we have a Doflamingo, we're actually probably in a pretty good spot here. Um, but it does not look like we do. We're going to actually go three on Kami to swing five. Um, opponent choosing whether he wants to take or not right now, probably indicating that he does not have a whole lot of counter in hand. He'll actually have to give us a 2k for the 1k swing. So we'll just go 7k at board, followed by another 7k at leader and a 10k at leader. Bring the opponent down to one, and then we will go ahead and play the Rosinante for two. So actually in a pretty good spot here. We have more life than our opponent, and our opponent does not have enough swings to end this game right now. He would need an Ichiji, but we do have a blocker still. So with one life, um, if he does not clear board, he's kind of screwed. We do have one card in hand, though, so Ichiji can make this a little awkward, which, yeah, he is going to instantly play. Um, drawing one before he does the effect. I would have called him out there. <laughs> Just joking. <laughs> Gonna play the <laughs> Chi Chi on board. Choosing what to minus right now. He could minus the Hody and risk us uh, not having the counter right now. But looks like, yeah, he's going to actually minus the Hody and go seven into six. So if this is a 2K, it's not that bad. So we're going to go ahead and block. He will use stage right now, getting rid of the Chi Chi, sees what he has to deal with. We'll go ahead and grab the Reiju here. And with two Don, no, four Don remaining, he could actually play the Reiju and draw two if he really wanted to. But he's probably going to choose to swing into board. So Hody's still at 6k, so with no 2ks in hand, we cannot beat 7k. And then he's actually going to attach one to Reiju. And probably swing six into Arlong, demanding that that card in hand be a counter. Was that not a counter card, I'm it assuming? Was, it was an Arlong. It was an Arlong in hand, right? So we had no counter in hand in that moment. Opponent, opponent giving us a chance and flashing his hand to us. So we have a little bit of a chance here, but going to play the Reiju onto board. And now at this point in time, opponent and one life, we might just kind of have to go for it. Um, two cards in hand is not a great spot. And we definitely can't really clear this board at all. So, dead next turn, almost 100%. If we don't win right now, we pretty much lose. Or, we can pray for boat in life. Which, boat in life is always an out. And if that's our only out, um, sometimes you gotta play for it. So, <laughs> looking at opponent's trash, probably looking for the amount of 2Ks at this moment in time. He actually used a lot this game, so... The odds he has some in hand right now might be a little low. Putting six on Kami will go eight. He'll give us double 2k right away, which means we are not ending the game this turn. So probably going to choose to go for board. No, we still lose, actually. So yeah, we're going to go for leader. So if we do get boat uh, and we do not die, we win. Because the only blocker Reiju really ever runs is queen. And the odds he has it are pretty low. So opponent going to activate stage. Just see what we got before we play out this turn. He'll grab the Niji. And at this point, probably just going to swing for the fences. We've got, looks like that's eight Dawn up. So a lot of big swings coming in here. Going to go eight to leader. We will take that. No boat, unfortunately. And with a 7K to leader, we'll take that. And boom, baby, there's the boat. <laughs> Resting the Niji, unfortunately. It was not in the first life. And we do not have enough counter in hand. So that, unfortunately, will be the game. And that is going to be the video, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for watching our Hody Jones local experience brought to you by Mr. Colin. Again, thanks to him. Um, we actually, you could have played that last turn a bit differently and probably won, huh? Knowing Boat was in your final life. If, if I prayed to the gods and I decided that Boat was my only out and I took a guess that it was in my life, I could have put six on leader 
swung 11 into life. He takes, he goes to zero. Mm-hmm. Then play Arlong, lock his leader, and pray with no cards in hand. Yep. That was my only out, and I probably should have played for that. But, you know, it is what it is. I mean, that's a really hard out to see. Because then he probably, you know, he swings with his two characters on board, and then you rest the other one. But at that point, if he has an Ichiji, you still lose. Which, true. I don't think he had, so you would have had it. But there's no way to know that, and obviously, you're not you're not playing around that. Oh. Bowden first life won the game regardless, so Bowden second life was not the out we were looking for. But I hope you guys enjoyed the Hody games from the Hody Master. I call him the Hody Master because he is the only Hody player on planet Earth I know. <laughs> As you can see, his deck is basically completely dripped out. So this is a uh, this has basically been the deck he played the most this set. If if yeah, so far, he, yeah. yeah, he actually went to Santa Clara Regionals and went five and four. So that's a winning record at a regional tournament with Hody. Name anybody else that did that. Um, side note. Um, our Mr. Wraith Talks, my co-host on this channel, not to call him out, but he also went 5-4 at Santa Clara. So, hey, Hody Jones, as good as Moria, <laughs> you heard it here first. So, thank you for watching, Goaty Jones, once again. Um, looks like the poll right now is a toss-up between Red Purple Uta, um, Zoro and Sanji, and also Perona. So, all of them in the running right now, so we'll see which one we end up playing next week, but... Please do like and subscribe um, and look forward to next Saturday, guys. But anyway, you have a great day. I'm going to head out of here. Peace.